this top there and there we go <laughs> Welcome to Witch Hat Chats, presented by the Ever Moving We Rise Temple, the Laughing Soul Holistic Center, and Moonlight Potions and Charms. So I want to welcome everyone and Pam. You know, it's going to be me and Pam. We are the host of it. And um, Pam, what do you think about, about music and ritual? Uh, that's not really a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> Um, I love music and ritual when we can do it, especially if you can get some good drums, um, chanting going on. There's nothing better than outside around a fire, somebody on the drums and all of us dancing around the fire. That kind of sums up what we like to do. But music and ritual is awesome. Um, it's done all over. Music um, is what brings us together as people. You hear a rhythm or a beat and you you just, even if you don't know the words, you're, you're moving, you can't sit still. And that's what's terrible when we have these wonderful groups on here is I'm bopping away. You know, I look like I'm having seizures. I'm really not guys. I'm listening to the music. I don't sit still. I love it. So when we have really good groups on, I'm so glad that Nikki kind of pushes me off to the side because I'm out here doing this. Oh, I got to come back on again. Don't I? So ritual. I think music should be played all the time. Ritual, work, wherever you can play it. Whatever moves your soul. And it's amazing. I have a very wide eclectic music that I like from all over. And um, it's just, it's uplifting. I don't care what anybody says. Music is what makes us move. Um, I know our tradition doesn't do a whole lot with music and ritual. But when I get out to the area and we do ritual i've always got something blasting some music in the background especially get you the mood for it yeah you know yeah see what, what music does is it helps you bring up the energy and get that energy really really charged and see i love music to death i mean when when i'm doing my rituals i always play a certain type of song to be able to help me gather in the spirit gather in that sacred place and be able to bring that circle up and when i bring up that circle boom you can pretty much really feel that between the drums and everything like that and even in in north carolina we do have a coven that uh, that i think it's like once a year they do an entire ritual based on a certain uh, musician's songs and so like um they did El elton john at one time I wish I was there for that. Elton John, I love Elton John. Um, and I've heard when I go to these pagan conventions, you know, I go and I listen to all their all the different types of music from all the pagan musicians. And it's it gives you a different feeling because you want to get up, you want to dance. You don't want to sit down for that, you know. Even though somebody who can sit down, down for that. Right. But we're going to like do this. I said, you know what? You gave me an idea, Pam. I want to see you dance. I'm going to put music to it. We're going to put it on Facebook. We're going to watch me. Audience, if you want to see Pam dance, you need to put it in the comments and say, hey, we need to see Pam dance. And we need to see some very good pagan rap music or pagan um, drum music or pagan something. To, so that way she can be booping around. And we'll, we'll do the Egyptian. Walk like an Egyptian. There we go. Huh? Oh my God, that's old. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, 
Steve Martin did an Egyptian song too, if you remember right. Yeah. Back, way back in the day. That's going back even further. Now, I just think music talks to the soul and it doesn't matter if you know the words or not. I mean, before the advent of the internet, we sang the words wrong every song ever produced because nobody knew the words. Louie Louie is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the words of that song, including the guys that sang it. Or La Bamba. La Bamba is another one. La Bamba. I, um, I, just, I just mutter as, I, mutter as I'm doing it. I'm like, la 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 bamba. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Right. Or the Macarena. That was another one. Another one. Uh, <laughs> didn't you move to it? You did. You did. See, the thing about music is what it does is if you hear a song, it brings you back to a certain time in which you heard that song you know it could be something good and it could and it's the quickest way to uplift your mood the quickest oh, yeah way. there's you know? days you just got a blast whatever on the radio as loud as you can and just bop around the room for a few minutes um or you get that stupid song stuck in your head oh my um, god and you can't get rid of it and you want to get rid of it especially if it's a song that you really don't like and you want to get rid of it and it's like oh my god can't what can i listen to to get this song out of my head and it's almost freaking impossible and <laughs> you, if somebody had on facebook uh, a lyric to a song and they're at the bottom they said did you sing it or say it and i'm like oh my god 95 percent of the people sang it, it you <laughs> see a lyric and it's like oh and you sing the lyric in your head right right I right. won't mention it, but the song with the phone number in it. Oh, yeah. How I many people that. knew that phone number? You don't know your own number, but you can sing that phone number back, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody's got that song stuck in their head. <laughs> so we get our groups on today. But okay. yeah, no. Music is, is what binds us. It's one of the ties. It doesn't matter what language it's in. It doesn't matter what the words are. If you hear it, you either like it, you don't, or you're okay with it. But, um, and that's in my office, my office is like a little UN. We got everybody from everywhere and someone will, you know, have a little music on in their, their little office area. And it doesn't matter what language it's in. If you like it, you're out there without realizing you're popping to the copier, you know, you're just going mm -hmm. along. And it's like, that song is a Lithuanian song, but hey, it's got a good beat to it. So, you don't know the words, you don't care, but you do. And I, I think music, it needs to come back. Um, a lot of younger witches are not using as, music as much. And the drumming circles are like, oh my God, nothing beats a good drumming circle. Oh that yeah. Is, even if you can't play, you know, if you just take your drum and just pound along. You don't have to play. All you got to do is be there and listen to the music and the energy that the drums are giving you. And it just makes you move. And they're okay with that. The drummers are okay with that. They're, they don't say, well, you have to play. No, 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 no. They want you there because they want you to dance and gather that energy and celebrate the goddess and the God within you. That's what they want you to do. I love drumming circles. New Jersey has a huge one and uh, they actually put their stuff on YouTube, which is really cool. I get to watch it. I used to go, can't live too far now, but just the, the drumming, you just like, mm, you get to going on that and the faster the drums go, the faster you go. It's a great way to clean house. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Put on a drumming CD and you can go through clean your house and go, what? I didn't even know I was moving, but you're moving to the drums. But I really, I think we need to bring it back. A lot of the old chants are not around as much anymore, which I'm really happy with our group that's coming on today because they sing some of the old chants. Yeah, and um, speaking of our guest host, Pam, I think it's time to introduce them. Okay, now this is what's really awesome. This is a really wonderful group. They've been around since 2001. And they've been creating music to celebrate spirit with song. Um, over the past two decades, ooh, it sounds like a long time, um, this pagan band has evolved a unique sound, complete with deep, multi-textured chants and explosive drums. Again, we're talking about those drums. Their performances are designed to build community and get people dancing. 
um, with seven albums. So that's seven guys, seven CDs you can go out and purchase. Um, we're proud to introduce the pagan musical group, Spiral Rhythm. Yeah. That's in my head. Wait, 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 wait. We're supposed to be doing our stuff. Oh. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. Oh. All right. Oh, before we get started, can we get everybody's name and musical instruments they play? If you could just hold it up and give us your name and the instrument. That would be hey, awesome. Carrie. I'm Carrie. I play the, the djembe and the june and shakers. And I sing. I can't hold them all up. I'm Kiki <laughs> and I play things and a drum. Awesome. And I'm CJ and I play this wonderful Bodrin gifted to me by Jeanette and Cliff. Uh, and also a lot of percussion instruments, small boy. These two are our main writers too. Almost all the songs that we're gonna sing are done by them. Yes. Rick, Myself and John have put a couple out there. You'll see. We've got some new stuff coming out. Yeah. So Kira, I play the Dubek. That's um, one of the first instruments I learned. I also play Zills because I belly dance. So I play Zills. I play tambourine, Rick. You don't uh, have your a lot of different, uh, A lot of different instruments. And I also play my bootay. She plays her booty. She plays her booty. Her booty. Let me see you shake it. Let me see you shake it. Shake it good. Shake it. Shake it. It's an yeah. instrument. <laughs> I'm Richard and I drum and play guitar. Our newest member. Oh, I'm John Baba Geisha. I play the Ashiko and the Jimbe. This is Miriam and Terrence. And I play my mouth. Because we sing a lot. He's gifted. <laughs> Just ask him, he'll tell you. He knows. <laughs> I'm Rick. I'm not about to pick up my drums, but I have djembes and conga quintas and bongos and cymbals and all kinds of stuff and shakers and other toys. He's he puts the poly in the polyrhythmic. He's very professional. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is awesome. So, how did the group meet? I mean, tell us a little bit about your group and, you know, how did y'all get together and something on your magical backgrounds? So we got together actually through a couple LARPs and Rocky Horror Picture Show because that's how we kind of- And this is like 91, 92, 93. Yeah, okay. and so we were like the little outcasts, the witches. And so we started doing more and more stuff. And then uh, PJ was involved in all of those things. Then that's when we met uh, Kiki from one of our mutual friends that did that. And we started going to festivals and we did our thing. And then Kiki had a baby, to, well, they kept asking which is to Richard. And then Kira joined us. So that's the kind of evolution of how everybody got into the band. And we've had several members over time come and go, Evan which we all well. love and adore. Yes. It's just a question of, you know, we, we're changing. I mean, we used to, when we first started out, there was like 17 of us. We started you know? going to pagan gatherings. Right. And we were an orchestra. It was more like right. a chorus. Yeah, sure. It was more like a chorus. It was like a glee club for pagans. We would have big rituals it in was. our home, and Kiki would be like, all right, we're looking for a new god and goddess song. And she's like, hold on a second. Hum, look into the ass of the lady. And boom, she made a song during ritual. You did it. And we sung our rituals. And we sung our rituals. So then when we started to take ourselves out of that and go to pagan gatherings, we still did that. We would go to the little talent shows or the bardic circles. We would sing around the drum circle. And those of us who didn't really sing and whatever, felt right. that drumming was just as important of a contribution and that's kind of how the drumming evolved into the rituals because i never did any of the rituals that we did at houses you know friends when when carrie and john were the high priest and priestess and we actually were doing all of the singing chanting and stuff in the rituals they'd be written around the songs and stuff so it was it was very cool but for me that was not my part so i'm like okay i'm gonna drum i'm, I'm still friends i still want to be with this group but 
I wasn't raised pagan. I don't know any of this stuff, or you know, didn't even really look into it. But they're friends. So. He's a good Catholic boy until I snatched him. Oh. Yeah, he gave up Catholicism before he met John. He just joined the rest of us as an Episcopagan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Some of my some well, of the songs I'm writing do sound a little gospel for some reason. <laughs> even though some of us are from up north, actually, ironically, Carrie's from like Rockford, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. I'm from Chicago originally, but Cincinnati, all my adult so life has been down south. He's from Cincinnati, but we still have a southern flair. We love our sweet tea and our rednecks. Well, I'm, I'm Georgia, <laughs> you know. For sure, um, Georgia. Georgia, other than being politically backwards, is is, is, is an awesome state to be in. Actually. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful state. It's yeah. a beautiful state. And um, and I love it. It's worth fighting for. So. Um, Kiki, what's gonna take over? Yes. Uh, was I? Yes, please. Okay. Actually, I, mean, I do want to, if, if I may, I want to share a little story about us. Um, before we were officially a performing group, when we were a group of friends who hung out and made noise wherever we were. We were at an event singing around a fire. A camp next to us was a gentleman who is no longer with us, Steve Collins. He was in the band Moonstruck. And he was camped next to us, and we were sitting around the fire. And I'll spare you the lyrics <laughs> of oh, I remember that what one. we were singing. But we were singing something a touch body, I think. Oh, and quite. Steve uh, eventually had had enough. And he came over. He was very sweet about it and funny. And he mentioned that maybe we could stop. But he was also one of the first people to tell us, you guys should be performing at Bardic. And he was the first person to um, mention recording. And we used to drive to his we house actually, yeah, in we Alabama. Tried and, recording with him. Yeah. We just weren't good enough at the time to be able to sing something through without a ridiculous amount of, of mistakes. <laughs> So we never got good copies at that point in time. Yeah, but YouTube, we, YouTube Moonstruck, because he really did some amazing stuff. Yes. He did a Pagan Man song. Secret Pagan Man. Secret Pagan, Pagan Man. Man. Pagan Man. He, he did a song that's, Seriously. that's been it's performed, fun. or in part, it's been covered by another group called Coyote Run. Um, part of one of his songs was actually incorporated into one of theirs. He was ubiquitous in the pagan music scene when we first started. And he was a driving force in getting us to record, yeah. but also in helping us find events to be invited to, to sing first in bardic circles, and then separately as our own band, you know, with the, hey, you have, you get to have your own whole concert, which- You get 45 minutes. Which was before, <laughs> before Spiral Rhythm was another group. And that was the group with anywhere from 18 to 20 something people yeah. all singing together. And when we divided, we divided because of a difference in focus and priorities. And that's when Spiral Rhythm as a group was born. And we've uh, had several iterations from our birth to now. We're constantly evolving our membership. We're reiterating? Yeah, reiterate. Well, newly iterating. Because we haven't re we haven't really reiterated anything. But we keep <laughs> changing with our membership. Sometimes uh, some of us come and go as we need to with life. And our constant is the fact that, you know, we have a tagline that says we celebrate the divine in song. And for us, music is our constant, um, not, not just as a band, not just at gatherings, but in our daily lives, all of us are very musical people. We're always listening. We're always looking for new sounds. We're always sending each other messages of, hey, have you heard this band or have you heard this cover of that song? And it is an enormous influence, but also an enormous boon and, and comfort in our lives to have the music and to be able to share it with others. Um, one of my favorite things on stage is we take time to speak to our audience because I, I like to think we don't perform for you, we perform with you. And having that connection with our audience, whether it's online or in person, is tremendous for us. It, it's a very big deal to us and the connection that we have and the ability to talk to people and to share songs with them and just sit around the camp to discuss origin stories, to hear new music is uh, an enormous part of who we are and how we are continually evolving. And to have that spirit just go, boop, here's this next song, ma'am. <laughs> That's you. what she does. Yeah. Both of these two, they're like, some days it takes a long time. The next day they're like, I am the 
Yeah. 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 gatherings we've been at and the energy they put out and you know it'll I don't know about Kiki but it'll just speak to me and it has a voice and suddenly there's a song that goes with it uh, I honestly believe that music is the it's part of our souls I don't think it's something that we can't do and stay sane and human and spiritual. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, can I share my crea creation yeah. myth? <laughs> it's about music. Okay. So uh, I, lots of cultures throughout history have creation myths. And some of them get in, written into big books and some of them get chiseled into walls. And mine's just mine and I like to share it just because it makes me happy. Um, in the beginning, there was the void. And in the void, there was nothing. And into the void, came the first note and the first note shattered and became all of the notes mm -hmm. and the notes became the song and the song is the source and the source is where everything comes from and from the source came the first life and from the source came the second life and from the source came all of life from the source came the mother goddess from whom was born all the other living things but before all of us before the stars and the suns and the moons and the planets before the great rushing outward and the great drawing inward, before all of that, there was the first note, which became a song. And when we write music, we are channeling that. And everything that is, from the least grain of sand to the greatest burning star, all of that are notes in the song. And when we are all part of that, we all are all part of that sort of perfect orchestration and that perfect symphony. And it all starts with the first note. That's my creation, sorry. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, that was beautiful. So ladies, this is a question for the ladies here. Okay. Uh, now I have seen on the news that in, in mainstream, like for example, in country music, they say that women have a harder time breaking into the country music and being listened to than men. So is it any kind of difference with you guys? Do you believe that being a woman, it makes you a little bit, it makes it a little bit harder for you to break into oh, the no. music or, or what do you think about that? I think it's the opposite. I think when it comes to pagan music specifically, <laughs> that it's actually easier on women than for men, because so much, especially of the people with whom we associate, the gatherings that we go to, so much of that surrounds or is centered around the divine feminine, because masculine, outside of paganism, God. masculine is there, the masculine rules, but within paganism specifically, there is a predominance of the divine feminine. And so I think it's easier as a female or as a group of females to find an audience in the pagan world than it is for men. I think men have to- um, You have to be a bard. They have to learn how to think no, really, differently. Like storytellers. Yeah, you know, they do. It's, all different. it's a different kind of thing. Right. I mean, I could name quite a few female performers that I know personally um, but I can only name a very few male performers, and they are incredible. And most, and, and most of them are going to be in groups. Right. Or, as Rick said, Bardic. I mean, Arthur Hines, he's definitely, he is a, just a smashing musician, and he's one of my favorite people but in the whole world. Blue. Um, Blue Guru is a part. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's a storyteller. It's, yeah. storytelling. it's all storytelling. It's really cool. It's a little crass at times, but it's very <laughs> cool. That's oh, cool. And, yeah. But he's fun. He's a great artist. Dave the Bard. Dave the Bard. Yeah. The Bard. Yeah. Um, great. Did, you, did you want to say anything about that? So I, I want to say one more thing. I, I think that a lot of pagans have evolved. They're, you know, there's, there's hereditary pagans, like ones that have grown up in the life. Um, but a lot of people have 
the umbrella of Christianity over them, which is God, Jesus, baby God, Jesus, Jesus. And so they come in with all of this ah of God energy that they're escaping from. And here is this beautiful goddess energy. And so they connect with that more. And then I feel like once they, a lot of, from what I've seen, and we've been in this community for over 20 years, and we've seen people grow and evolve. And what changes is all of a sudden the goddess clicks, and then they're like, oh, what about Kratos? Oh, right. what about this? And so then they invite the god energy in. And then it's a balance, and then they learn the duality of them. Right. So. There's a lot more goddess songs out there, though. There are a lot more. We have a lot more goddess We've had to make a point to write. God songs just to have some balance so that us guys do not feel a little too overwhelmed <laughs> by that. So you guys didn't want to feel too overwhelmed by um by uh, all female songs, no. all goddess songs. You know, it's like okay, we have a couple of God songs now, you know. I myself when I'm writing, I, I would just assume go with the ambiguous in general, either God goddess or like Elements. they well yeah. you <laughs> you versus he or she. Right. Because that, you know, if you're singing a love song, I'm, I'm a gay man. If what? I'm gonna, if I'm gonna picture it, I'm gonna picture a guy. But I want a guy to be able to feel like he can sing it to a woman, or you know, hear it that way in his head and not feel uncomfortable about it. So if you put you instead of he or she or whatever, then it gives most of them fit that way pretty well. So you know, and it gives a much more wide range. I think it's it's a more balanced approach at singing a love song to somebody or whatever. So a lot of bands they don't really last so long. So what is your secret? Lots and lots of liquor. <laughs> no. no. Uh, so again, we we've lasted because we haven't held on to any kind of straitjacket definition of who and what we are, because we've tried to be inclusive of each other, but also because we're not we don't just get together and sing and then we go our separate ways. We have very interconnected lives and you know, um, we have our kids who play together. We have, when we have tragedies and, and it was something of a tragedy that really uh, coalesced us in the beginning in 1997 was when we went from this sort of diaphanous idea of friends who like to sing to music is a connecting point for us and uh, we've been with each other through marriages through births through deaths through multitudes of relationships we've been with each other through um, tornadoes and floods and fires and you know we have driven all over the country to rescue each other and we've called each other at two o'clock in the morning when things are, are going wrong and we've celebrated each other when things go right, and we've grown up together. Really, we started out in our, what, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And sure. that's still <laughs> some of us. Yeah, some of them. But just regardless of age, you know, I think we're all constantly growing and evolving. And because we've been with each other through so many of these experiences in life, that it's all part and parcel. We're not we're not just a band. We're, we're family. A, a group. We're a tribe. We are a family. Um, and that helps. And when we get really annoyed with each other, <laughs> we're completely okay with walking away for a minute and saying, let's not have band practice for a couple of weeks. And let's go, you know, let's go do what we need to do. And we've learned how to communicate with each other and how, how to listen. I think we've all learned how to listen differently than how we were raised. We've all learned how to hear each other beyond just the words that are being used, but to try and hear what's beyond that to the motivation. Ooh, did you hear his comment? Right. Did you hear him? <laughs> Your presentation sucks. <laughs> and at other times it's like herding cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I feel privileged to have known all of them since they were, in my opinion, anyway, little bitty fellas. Early 20s. <laughs> and in my case, they've been early. kind enough to, to uh, nurture me through a tough time, and I don't know what I'd do without them. Embryonic. 
Yeah, Bird was several. He, I mean, he's been with us since his conception, and that's not even a joke. No. I mean, I, that's not hyperbole. He was with us when he was like three cells big on stage, and, and we he didn't hated come and dance. We didn't. He did. <laughs> we didn't even know what flavor he was, so he was referred to as the peanut for a while because he was about the size of the peanut when he was first on stage with yeah. me. And uh, after he was born, and we would do band practice, and I'd bring him with and schlep him along. We'd play pass the baby. So everybody could hold, have a little baby therapy. Yeah. Awesome game. He, right before, about, a week, about a week before he was born, we did a concert. And I was yeah. trying really hard. She tried to have that baby. I was dancing to another band. I'm and I was good. dancing. I and I was like, get out, get out. Who get out. <laughs> I was like 500 weeks pregnant and I was done. <laughs> and, but it was just under a week later that he was born. And afterwards we were at a band practice and you know we go through our list of songs and we were doing working on come and dance and i started and i don't know if you're familiar with the song but it kind of has a big open and every time i would hit that opening note his little face would crumple in on itself and it the tears true. would fall and he would cry and as soon as yeah. i stopped he'd be like ah yeah and then i would start singing it again and he would just be so distressed it was hysterical. And when we decided point. it's because whenever I would sing it when I was pregnant, I was pushing down so hard he was getting squashed. And it just reminded him of being smashed. <laughs> and that's my favorite song in our library. <laughs> <laughs> so, so apparently not only can you teach an unborn child a favorite song, you can also teach them one they hate. <laughs> Click on to love later. <laughs> Uh, there are awesome, but... Sorry. I didn't do it. Yeah, you know, I dress them up. Can't take them anywhere. <laughs> Don, you're being awful quiet back there. I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I've watched them change and grow. And I mean, they were always good, kind people, but they have become some of the finest people I've ever been privileged to know. They're kind and it's, and I think the other thing that keeps us all around is that we absorb enough energy from all of you folks out there that attend the gatherings, that come to our shows, and we take that in and we reflect it back to you. Speak to the skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, we we have become energetically we're all connected now. So their energy helps sustain us and uh, gives us the ability to get past anything that uh, goes wrong. Well, except that one thing, but we don't discuss that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that one thing. Yeah, I forgot what that was. What that was. <laughs> I'm old. I claim forgetfulness. Yeah, it works for me. Trust me. <laughs> you get over that 60 marker and you can claim anything and get away with it. Yes, yes. You look forward to your senior moment stringing closer and closer together. <laughs> Life is one huge senior moment after the other. Ask me. <laughs> Ask me? Really? <laughs> you yeah. deal with me on a daily basis. My senior moments are everywhere that's that's very true because she tells <laughs> stories about when she had dino as a puppy so <laughs> yeah my guys and love red flintstone as well <laughs> it's a blast with these younger ones it really is mm -hmm. oh, by the way i love you guys hats well thank, oh, thank you. you um this uh I love hearing you guys' stories. Um, I was looking, we, you know, we pick up a couple questions as we go along. So there's always questions we ask because we get asked questions about groups that come on. Um, I have Carrie, um, what is Unleash the Goddess and how did that come about? So Unleash the Goddess is my business. It is where I sell stuff like this. Stuff like that, clothing. I would do stuff for goddess-sized gals and little oh. bitty gals. 
I, we have, thanks to John, who is my business partner, like we have more boy stuff. And so we have stuff like this, get super fancy pants stuff. It's also an avenue where John and I can do our art. Um, he does a lot of pa paintings and illustrations. I do a lot of the handmade jewelry. Um, I don't have a website, but you can find Unleash the Goddess on Facebook. I have been doing this since 98. I mean, huh? and it was called Spiral Mood. My very first event is one of like two that I've never vented at, and I kind of did. And it was, I went up to Wisconsin to Eagle, or Eagle Cave or Bear Cave, and I did PSG. And I was such a noob. I was so excited. I went with my godmother, who was a witchy, witchy goddess. And she's a thrift store shopper, so she had a whole bunch of thrift store stuff, and she was a vendor. And so going to a festival and that being kind of my first experience was amazing. And that's where I went and found, I went to the chant workshop. I brought chants back to our group. We spiralized them. Um, and, and then I happened to work for a company that had really cool t-shirts and pewter pendants, so I'm not Champa. So I got a whole bunch of that stuff and I set up in a blue easy up. <laughs> selling t-shirts, incense, and pe Peter pendants. And I did that for about four or five years. Beaded and then, curtains. Huh? Those beaded curtains. Beaded curtains, oh my gosh. They and were John horrible. and Rick and another guy named Trey were all at the beginning of that. But then I just kind of filtered out. They had their lives they were doing great in. And then I hooked up with PJ, who made her own clothing. And we traveled for Quite a lot. Ten, years. Ten years, yeah. Yeah, and and then it evolved again, and PJ did some separate stuff, and I evolved to, to having John and a, another gal come help us. And tell you what, this COVID stuff has got everything at a screeching halt. So, uh, if you want to buy anything, wink, wink. <laughs> my dirty shoe. Um, yeah. Kiki also has a vending booth. Just to throw that out there. Yeah. She's a she's a magpie's moon and I'm Raven's moon and originally she was spiral moon. So we were <laughs> They're the same. We were the triple moons. <laughs> I thought we were the lunatics. It was not intentional. Uh -huh. Of course there was a time when we were showcased as the Lingham Riders. The Lingham Riders. That was not me. <laughs> yes, it was. No, I <laughs> So so we went to PSG and that's a pretty big event. And we you know, we weren't a band that performed on stage a lot. We did a couple down here in Georgia. And so we were like, okay, to, yes, you were there because we said, Shh, I was never. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> up. <laughs> and so we decided, hey, they have a Bardic Circle night on the stage. People hear us sing all the time. Let's go up there. And what do we want to be called? <laughs> and Ooh. this person who wasn't there. <laughs> Lingham. Came up with the name. Writer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I came up with that name because somebody else wanted something a lot ruder. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was something like the Yoni Girl. Uh, sure. Definitely Yoni. Yeah. So with Lingham Riders it was. And, and then I think two years later we got invited to come perform and that was one of our favorite events to perform at. It's, it is, it's home. It's yeah. home. It's yeah. home. We'll talk about it more. Yeah, PSG is pretty amazing. I mean, okay. we just, for some reason, we always connect so well with that audience and they connect with us. I mean, we have great times at concerts other places, but so far, nothing can top the energetic exchange that we get at PSG. It's just amazing. Well, I'll agree with you. I'm in Florida, so... I'm kind of a little spoiled. I moved down here a few years ago and I've gotten to see some of the awesome groups at that event. Um, it is, the uh, whole event has an air about it that is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. The goddess, I think, blesses that area. And it just- I think it's that everybody's willingness to leave their regular self and their regular life at the door and become their better selves for a week. Well, that's the thing is it's a week 
and you know going into it you got a week to do this and and build relationships instead of a day or two or whatever kind of thing like a weekend might be so you know the it it's that much better plus the fact that we perform three times in a week and do chant workshops and participate in rituals and stuff like that so it's not like it's just a one or two thing while we're there we keep pretty busy. A lot of the festivals have started having not just Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but a lot of them are starting on Thursday or Wednesday. And so that helps everybody, you know, set up their tent and they didn't put all that effort into it for one day. You know, yeah. they got to have set it up and then fun, 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 and then have to break down. <laughs> That's always been fun. Yeah, we always love longer events because we can offer more classes and Class. do more things and um, you know, we can have a chant share workshop and we can have a dance workshop, dancing to different um, songs or chants. And uh, just like, I, I do a lot of like movement therapy and um, spiritual connection therapy. And uh, Carrie does uh, um, the, uh, what was the one you did? Trans the trance dance. So Carrie does the trance dance and, uh, you know, to be able to, I'm sorry? She, she also does the silk salt day. Right, but, but just, yeah, the silk salt day is awesome. Um, just to be able to connect with people on many different levels. And then also, you know, our camps are pretty open. Hey, come on over and, you know, hang out with us for dinner. Or you need some water, come sit down, you look hot. Have you, you eaten? Know? Have you <laughs> eaten? <laughs> yeah, it did really, you know, help. It's a huge community thing. And the more, more we can in, in, um, integrate, the more we can um, uh, communicate with other people at an event, you know, the more enriching it is for us as well as people who go to those events. And that just makes it really and that Yeah, like we're not just here performing for you, we're here performing with you. We're here at this event to communicate with you and you know share. So we that's always separate from the much community. more enriching for us as well as other people. And then we take that to other places and then they take that home and to their places of work and their places of community locally like it's it's really you know interactive and the more we spread the love the more love there is to spread yep. that's that's really awesome a lot of groups um i like the week-long concerts and the week-long um pagan gatherings um we had them in, i i lived in baltimore for about 50 years and we had free spirit every year which was awesome it's a whole week and like you could tell who the pagans were by the week they asked off at work <laughs> how we get the request coming in oh, i didn't know she was pagan <laughs> so it was a fun time and you're right a week it's got to be a week almost you've just got to, to be able to go around and see everybody and talk with everybody now that we got you guys on here we're going to make you work for your um keep here and it's oh. time for our song of the week now as everybody's aware and if you're not you lived in a cave for the last couple months the coronavirus epidemic um, has really hurt pagan musicians and groups as well as their enterprises. Um, when the groups go out, they take their enterprises with them, whether they're selling their CDs, t-shirts or whatever, it all goes with them and you get to see that. But unfortunately, um, since nobody can gather anymore, their record sales as well as all of their other sales are like starting to tank. So each week, Nikki and I select a song from a pagan musician or band. Um, we display their music during the video. So since we got you guys on here, we're going to sing one of my favorites. Um, and it's uh, Faith Inside, and it's from the album Mischief. So hey. we're going to sit and listen to that for a little bit. When the road seems to never and the world fades to black and there's no light inside your tunnel and you're scared and you want to turn back that's when you hold on tight to the faith inside let the memory of the goddess be your guide. There ain't nothing in this world that faith can't get you through. Put the love of the goddess and her faith in you. When you stumble on your journey, 
In all your choices, they seem wrong. When you're lost in your confusion and you feel like you don't belong, that's when you hold on tight to the faith inside. Let the memory of the goddess be your guide. There ain't nothing in this world that faith can't get you through. With the love of the goddess and her faith in you, give a hand up to a stranger. Help the meek and you'll grow strong. Life is greater with a purpose. And your heart will find its song. That's when you hold on tight to the faith inside. Let the memory of the goddess be your guide. There ain't nothing in this world that faith can't get you through. With the love of the goddess and her faith in you. Hold on tight to the faith inside. Let the memory of the goddess be your guide. There ain't nothing in this world that they can't get you through. With the love of the goddess and her faith in you. Hold on tight to the faith inside. Let the memory of the goddess be your guide. There ain't nothing in this world that they can't get you through with the love of the goddess and her faith. We are back and we are live with the spiral rhythm. And so now I'm going to introduce them. They're actually going to play for us. Yes, they're going to play for us. And they're excited about this. And so are we, Pam and I. We and are. Yeah, yeah. So we can't wait for you guys to start. So your first song or that they're going to play for us is called Freedom. So okay. take it away, guys. Let me mute. The, uh, there's, this song usually comes with a, a soapbox speech, so it, it would be strange to do it without that. Uh, it's called Freedom, and it was inspired by an event that we performed at. And Well, actually, no, we weren't performing. We were attending, and we were all camped together and having a blast. And that was during a time when it was kind of dry up in the mountains, and the event was told kind of at the last minute, you can't have your bail fire. It was a bail plane, bail plane event. And they were told, you can't have your bail fire. And the organizers of the event, in an act of sheer madness and rebellion, asked the attendees, are you willing to deal with the consequences of having our fire if we choose to have it? To which the community enthusiastically responded, but of course, we are willing mm -hmm. and the fire was had anyway and that was a time when i would have died rather than speak in public or perform in front of anyone but i was i sat back and watched because i studied my prey mm -hmm. and i wrote a poem inspired by what i saw and experienced which turned into this song and it is a song about um, something that i feel is irrepressible and that is freedom. I love the, the in Jurassic Park when the character Ian Malcolm says, uh, life will find a way. And I paraphrase that as freedom will find a way. You can only oppress for so long before um, it's like trying to hold in gas. You can only hold it in for so long <laughs> before it will find its way out. And um, to me, freedom is something that is, uh, 
it is a sacred right and it's fundamental to everything. And so go out and vote. Vote. Yes. Yeah. Vote. And so um, freedom to fly means freedom to fall. Freedom to succeed means freedom to fail. It also means you're free to get back up and fly again. And it means you are free to get back up and try again. So I am freedom. I am freedom. everything so that's the reason why i did you know the the, the <laughs> it's like a froze awesome. yeah, for a second but other than that it, it was amazing oh, you know, the first time I, I remember seeing you was in the south carolina pagan pride festival oh that's awesome oh yay yeah. Yeah. Show. i was i was there this was like years ago back when i was well i'm not that much older I'm, I'm, I'm eternally, internally youthful, um, <laughs> but that was, that was a while back. And I remember I never heard of your band and I was a part of a coven at the time. 
And they told me, they said, you've got to listen to these women. You got to listen to these people. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then you guys came up with the song called Witches. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. That is my favorite, oh, absolute yeah. favorite song of you guys. Well, it happens to be on the list. Wink, wink. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So can we spook things up and, and have you guys to go ahead and play that one? Yeah, sure. Okay. You can do that. I definitely have to mute. <laughs> I tend to sing along, so for the sake of everybody's ears, I mute. All right, Pam, as you're casting your spell, make sure it's positive. You got to have this positive energy, man. So go ahead and shake your booty while they get going. <laughs> eternal thanks to Janet Stewart for our for writing this down and inspiring us to bring this to the table to sing. Oh, 
Bora lá, bora lá. Vamos lá, Mari. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> And you can lay down, too. <laughs> I need to talk, too. So, so what was the um, message behind that? Or what was the um, background story of that one? I'm just kind of curious. Well, that song actually came from the Witch's Bible, complete from Janice Wood Farrar, the words. And this was one of the seminal books that I think, you know, most witches have in their library or had in their library or have four copies, you know. And uh, um, this was a song we brought back way early. And we just wanted to take some stuff that people had written and go, hey, let's turn it into a song. Let's turn it into something we use in ritual ourselves. And we have. And that was an example of that, basically. We call it spiralize it. Yes, spiralize it. Spiralize it. I love that. Spiralize it. Spiralize it. So, what will be your next lovely song? This our next song is something that Carrie wrote. It's a newer song. So, so there's this energy at all of these events that you go to, and like, like we said earlier about PSG, that is our home, and that translates to any of these pagan events down in Florida. Louisiana, New York, Baton Rouge, Ohio, all of those have this magic energy and everybody takes that weekend or that week and they trans transmit it or transfer it into their self and it's home. Shouts out to like Brushwood and the Roundhouse and Dragon Hills and Sarah and Aaron and Mysteria and Griffin's uh, Nest and uh, Maddox Ranch in Florida. All, of all these wonderful places cool. that we've met some wonderful people to worship with.
guys uh, I swear when you come together it's like you have all this energy and just and you go Pow. we call that shaking the pillars <laughs> of heaven and earth and whatever else hallelujah bless it be y'all <laughs> all right we have one more time enough time for one more song what are we gonna do healing circle. Healing circle. Healing circle? Yeah. Yeah. all right so which one is this it's called healing circle. Healing circle. So we're gonna send some love out to everybody who needs it. There's some people out there that need it. There's some people here that need it. There's an entire world. There's an entire that needs it. World that needs it. And everybody in the coronavirus. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> so what we like to what we like to do is invite people to really take the time and listen to the words and sing along, and think about somebody that they have in their life that they want to be like. I want to say PJ, you know, Arthur. boom, that's where my one, I can't yeah. talk anymore. Arthur. 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 As you're listening, if you know the word sing along, I know if you've been to one of our concerts, you must have heard me say this, the better you perform for us, the better we perform for you. I see you lip syncing along there, you know it. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> and remember, words have power, that's why, yes. we're, why we're here doing what we do. Yes. This song is a song that enables us to connect even from distance, even over the internet. So if you are in the room with someone, feel free to, with consent, of course, hold hands, make contact. If you need the energy, take it in. If you want to share the energy, send it out. Say the names of people that you think could especially use what this song embodies. This is a gift that we give each other. And the more that you get it's Reiki, universal life force energy, you put it out there, it's going to come back to you, make you stronger so you can do more. And so think about it. And if that name you mentioned is your own, good. That's, That's okay. what you need. You need it, take you know? it. You are a circle. You are healing me. I am a circle, I am healing you, united. You are healing. 
Arthur. United. Kimberly Grooms. We are one. United. We are one. Will. Gives you chills. Where can we get your music? 
Um, I have, we have links on the Facebook page and our website. Uh, check out spiralrhythm.net. Uh, no spaces, no underlines, just spiralrhythmaltogether.net. And uh, go to the merch page and you'll get a link there to go and buy directly. You are also welcome to email me or uh, the emails on there, spiralrhythm yahoo.com <laughs> um, and uh, contact us um, if you want to ask questions about the, the merchandise or whatever and um, yeah, check us out. Ooh, we appreciate it. Also on there, if anybody is listening and you have a festival that you love, we have a click on there for press kits. So feel free to take that press mm -hmm. kit link and send it to your favorite festival if you want to see us there. Please. And we are definitely open to online. Right, oh, sure. Find us on Facebook. Send us questions. We love talking about uh, music, yours, ours, everyone's. If there's a festival that you want to see us at, tell the organizers. And we'll be doing another quarterly two hour concert, hopefully soon. I think in October. We're going to get ready for that. I think so. Yeah. We're going to, yeah. And um, yeah, also contact us. I know people use our music and ritual. If you ever like, um, oh, we have something coming. If, if you ever have anything happening where you want to use our music, we are very open to that. Um, please just contact us. Let us know. Send us videos or pictures of you using yes. our music. We love to see that. Oh we yeah, really love it. Yeah, because we also like to do other people's music too. So. Right. <laughs> we like to share. We love to share. All right, that is really awesome, guys. We're going to make sure we have the links up for you on our site so that they can get to you as they need to. I really want to thank you um, for coming on the show. This has been awesome. Um, I'm sure we've all mouthed the word while we were listening along. I know I'm good at it. Uh, that's why I mute. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Nikki, back to you. Thank you so much. So now it is time for us to go to our witch's cabinet. And so if you just give me a moment and here we go. All right, if the thing will play. On today's witch's cabinet, we're gonna be talking about traveling altars. Now, what is an altar? An altar is a structure upon which offerings are usually made for religious or spiritual purposes. It is also used to draw power into our magical workings and to separate us from the divine. Uh, traveling altars, they make use of light, portable, ritual items for convenience so we can be able to take them and just go with it wherever we are. So why would you need a traveling altar? Well, there's several different reasons why you may need a traveling altar. Number one, you're traveling all the time. Like for example, for those of you who go for to a pagan convention or you're just going out of town to somewhere else, or you're not even being. Okay, why does that stop? Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, let's go back, okay. <laughs> witch's cabinet we're going to be talking about traveling altars now what is an altar an altar is a structure upon which offerings are usually made for religious or spiritual purposes it is also used to draw power into our magical workings and to separate us from the divine uh, traveling altars they make use of light portable ritual items for convenience so we can be able to take them and just go with it wherever we are so why would you need a traveling altar? Well, there's several different reasons why you may need a traveling altar. Number one, you're traveling all the time. Like for example, for those of you who go for to a pagan convention or you're just going out of town to somewhere else, or you're not even being- Okay, why is it stopping? Why is it stopping? All right, we've got technical difficulties here. Okay, well, there's technical difficulties. So I have absolutely no clue why it is stopping. It was finished. Me... It ended the recording for some reason <laughs> on you. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Okay, okay, well, yeah. So we can pick that up. Come on, Nikki, go live. That's a traveling altar. What do I need it for? Well, you know, with traveling altars, we use them for several reasons. Number one, if we need to go out of town for some reason, we want to bring our altar with us, or we got a convention, or even if we want to go down to the circle and be able to have something there. 
That's one reason. Another reason would be in case that you live with people who are not pagan supportive. So that means that um, you want to have an altar which you can get it up and get it down very, very quickly. That's what you want the altar for. Um, one other reason would be because of the fact that you don't have a whole lot of space. Because let's, let's be serious. When it comes to altars, especially when it comes to magical altars, we got an altar for every single purpose in this world. We got a working altar. We have a money altar. There is an ancestor altar. And it depends on your religious beliefs. It depends on your spiritual beliefs. And it's ideal for you to have an altar for each and every single individual thing, right? But it's not always the case. We don't always have the room to be able to do that. So that's one reason why we need a um, traveling altar. It's to be able, like I said, get it up, get it down, get it up, get it down. And what magic, magical, um, what Moonlight Potions and Charms had um, given or had provided for the video was that their um, altar was, their traveling altar was called Altar on the Go. And let me see if I can find a picture of that. But basically, I was able to get everything out in less than two minutes. And it was a real nice altar because when you go and you try to select an altar to purchase, you want to make sure that number one, it's quick, it's convenient, and it's for you. Okay, that, that last one is the major importance because when it comes to our altars, each one of us is very individual. Not every one of our altars are going to be the exact and the same, especially the longer that you practice. Plus, on top of that, when you're looking for a traveling altar, you want to make sure that it has enough room to where you can add something personal to it. Like if you want to add like a small personal statue up there, or if you want to add herbs, or, you know, there's so many other different things that you can possibly add to it. Well, you Plus, know what I like about our altar on the go that you were showing? It's not breakable. That is so important when you're traveling to have something that you can put everything in that I've seen them that are fragile or glass. And I don't know about y'all, but when I put stuff in my car, you, you try not to break it, but you know, you want something you can pick up, go quickly, sit on the seat of your car and not have to worry about it if it tips over. Cause not everything's gonna fall out of it, which you know, me, I'm gonna dump it upside down. And it doesn't break. That's an awesome, that's a really good, awesome point on ours. So yeah, so this yeah. is what it looks like. Um, you've got so many different items in this. I mean, you have your own um, candles in there, which the candles, and this is one part that I really do like about it, is that they come in a separate bag. Because, all right, um, I live in North Carolina and it gets anywhere between 90 to 100 degrees. Pam lives in Florida. And it's even worse for her. So we understand what it's like for candles to suddenly be melted all over everything. I know I've had that problem. Pam, you've probably experienced that problem as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so with it being in a baggie, even if they do melt, they're not going to melt all over these other little items here that you've got. I mean, you got your two little tea light candles. You have this really little nice chalice on top of that. This is a um, pentacle that you can be able to have. Uh, we've got our wand. We have our shell that's for the incense cone, which that is also included, which is not included in a lot of um, different kits. And then you have your feather because you know with the smoke, you gotta be able to use that feather and be able to help that out, right? And then you have the matches that come with it as long with an offering tray and salt. And on top of that, you have your athame. And this athame has 16 different tools inside one thing. So you can be able to use it for other things other than your athame if you absolutely have to. On top of that, like um, you were saying, Pam, you've got the um, pail here that has a nice little handle to it. And so you can be able to take that, put that into a small suitcase, even a bag, and you can be able to go. On top of that, you have this very nice um, altar cloth. So to me, this is really, really uh, very complete for a witch's altar. And like I said, your altar depends on you. 
okay? It depends on what you want. It depends on what your beliefs are and so many other things. But, you know, it even has enough room to where if you want to add something, like I was saying previously, you can add something to it. It has a ton of room. And to be able to take it down was less than three minutes. So that is, you know, very, very quick on there. And the one thing I was saying in the video that I'm going to say now is when it comes to altars, I encourage all my clients to have something that represents their inner child on the altar because we are the divine. And as a divine, we must be able to um, acknowledge that and having the inner child on the altar acknowledges that you are spiritual and a lot of people what we do today is we basically are running around taking care of the kids taking care of everybody else and we always forget about us we forget about us and then we wonder why we're run down so one way to being able to honor us every single day is with that one little piece of the inner child is what it is like for me i've got a little bitty piece about this big it is um the child from the mandalorian which is the baby yoda and it's very very cute and i put it on there to represent the fact that i need to be able to honor myself my spirit and have a little fun because you know, the goddess and the god, they gave us a sense of humor for a reason. It's not that they wanted us to be dead serious all the time. I mean, Pam's always lighting herself on fire. I mean, come on. How, <laughs> how serious you can be on there. And you too can be a high priestess. It's real easy. Right. So, um, you know, like, like I was saying, with the traveling altars, whether you put your own together or you buy one, make sure you really research the ones that you buy, because a lot of them can be very expensive and not have half of the stuff that you want on there. So with the one that I just showed you, you can go on moonlightpotionscharms.com and be able to look at that. So anyway, that is the end for the witch's cabinet today. Yay. <laughs> Make sure you do get your altar to go. Trust me, you will not realize how many times you take that with you because you can go to an event and someone's going to forget something. Um, I've is. been to many events, forget the matches because nobody smokes anymore. So you're hunting matches or, oh, I forgot the candle for. Because, you know, sometimes life gets in the way of our rituals. And that is very, very true. Life does get in the way of our rituals. Or either we're always running late. And so you need something in advance to grab. Because I know me, even though I plan it down to the minute, something is, is going to happen. Okay. Like I'll get in the car and I'll be halfway down. And I'll forget one or two things. So having something like a traveling altar, you don't have to worry about that. You have all of it there. It's awesome. Pick it up and run. So you know how well you plan that goddess is laughing the entire time. You, you realize that, right? Right. Like with my track, with my video, my video is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Okay. We'll do it live. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, the traveling altars though are great. You don't realize when you do go to these um, events, um, you know, someone forgets something and it's always so great to say, Oh, do you have and what ends up happening is when you go to the events and you take your altar people kind of expect you to have it then because it's like oh she always brings her altar to go she'll have it that's true and, that's yeah true. and i've been so, to many events without matches without this without that and someone else will, oh here you know and they've got it with them well that's going to be the end for our um which had chats next week we will be discussing pagan businesses so if you have a question please put it in the comments or if you're running a business please help our fellow um, pagan business entrepreneurs and place a tip in the comments on how successful to run your business or even if you have an, a question about running a business please ask because you know what we need to come together 
And with this COVID virus, so many things are being stopped. And I already know two of my friends who are previous um, pagan business owners who went out of business because of this. So we really, really need to support our own pagan businesses. So please, please place a comment, a question, something like that so we can be able to address it in the next one. So I want to say goodbye. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Pam, for co-hosting. As usual, you are amazing, just like uh, our amazing audience. All right. Bye-bye. See you next week. Thank you.